on the balcony pegging my school shirt on the line. Hoping for some late afternoon sun. So it dries. Before mum gets home, I look down where it's all happening. I see Trevor Senior park up. These times, Trevor Senior would sit there till the engine turns cold. I see his chin drop to his chest and his eyes clamp up in there. It's like he's sleep talking because his lips move. But he turns off the engine, unclips his name badge, puts it in the glove box beside the other name badge for his weekend job, pulls out that photo of his son, holds it in his tough palm because he's lived that tough palm life and his lips start moving. But I can look what he's doing because now nah, he does the sign of the cross. He's praying in there, praying them heavy blessings on his son. Trevor Senior was enough worried by his son them times because of the incident that happened. But whenever Trevor Senior finishes work late and gets in for the hour that his son's in bed asleep, before he has his dinner, Trevor Senior likes to peek in his son's bedroom just to see his chest go up and down one time. So he's checking in on his boy like normal. He opens up his boy's bedroom door he nearly has a stroke for what he sees. Sitting on his son's bed, he sees one duppy just there. The son's under the duvet, asleep, not knowing the duppy is sat there on his bed. It's back to Trevor Senior. In just a quick flash of the ting where you blink and it's gone. Nah, the ting is there jamming on his bed for some time. Trevor Senior tries shouting at it to go away. Nothing comes out. Come like the duppy got some kind of invisible grip around Trevor Senior's throat. Like his mouth just hangs open, he can't breathe. His cheeks are wobbling, his eyes are watering. Like it's only when Trevor Senior starts seeing them floating bubbles that you see just before you faint that the duppy finally had gone. Allowing Trevor Senior to be free to collapse in the doorway, to breathe again, and to eventually wake the sun up by crying on the floor like that. The sun did join him in crying too, because the sun thought, nah. Dad's guy mad. Scared him, obviously. Because trying to make sense of what his dad was blubbering about was like trying to find a bit to peel back on a roll of sellotape. But there being no bit to peel back, more frustrating the more it go on. Trevor Senior was trying to think how maybe he imagined it. Because true say he was run ragged from lifting stockroom boxes triple shifts, back to back to back. And true say just some moments before the duppy incident occurred, as he shut his kitchen window, there was a gush of wind. And some second-hand weed smoke from outside did find his way up his nose. But Trevor Senior thought, no, no, no. The duppy he saw was real enough to go over and shake hands with. He swore to my mum with his index finger skyward that the duppy left the crease in the boy's duvet. Of all the places in the yard the duppy could have sat, the ting chose his son's bed. So that worried Trevor Senior, making him do weird things like stand outside his front door without putting the key in yet. He's doing it again. I see him stood there ages, screwing up his face at this thing, staring at this thing. The man puts his Bible on the wall, and crouches down where there's enough of these things on the ground there, picking up the things. Like Trevor Jr. comes out now, that's the son, same age I am. But Trevor Jr. don't ask no questions, he just leans the red cricket bat against the wall and bends down helping his dad picking up the things, shaking their heads like it ain't the first time they've done this. They both look at them little things in their palm. Cause it's pure badness what them not do. Mum sends me to the shop cause she forgot to buy seasoning salt. Gandhi got one of them annoyingly slow closing shop doors. You know the door, that when you try to be polite and shut it after yourself, you tug it. 
but it's not stubborn and wants you to know that it's independent and it's gonna shut itself in its own slow time, thank you very much. And, and you're like, listen, door. I was only trying to help you because you looked like you were struggling. So no need to get all independent on me. And you just flick your hand away from this ungrateful handle and leave it to take its time showing off itself. A what what girl comes in and tries teeth in 115p curly whirly. Thief? Sure? Out of my shop. Huh? Gandhi dashes her out his shop. Two twos now. That what what girl's mother busses in and goes mad, flinging up her arms and raising her voice. You calling my daughter a thief, Gandhi? Don't think I don't notice everything in your shop says not to be sold separately, Gandhi. Don't make me have to tell everyone to boycott your shop. Boycott your shop did make Gandhi's ears shoot up like the stray cat you've been studying moments before. And while this what what girl's mum continues screaming down his shop, Gandhi is in his head doing math sums, thinking, hmm, enough of them what what girl's parents come to my corner shop daily. Like if I bans one, they boycotts my shop and I lose the lot. That's what, what, 22, 25 customers not buying Cigarettes, milks, eggs, fruits, veg, TV guides. Are you even listening to me? The summer Gandhi's thinking did make Gandhi, without arguing back, go to his fridge and grab two big sunny D's, give one to the what what girl and one to the what what mum. Next time you come, I'll give you a discount. Man like Gandhi ain't in the business of losing customers. When I put my seasoning salt on the counter, all that Kami display was nowhere to be seen. Like, man's punching numbers in the register with a madness, telling me... Corner shop is a tricky business. It's just one iron brew bar, one Vimato. They take once a day, it's cheaper to let them steal it than to lose customer. But then, they have no respect for me. You know, I'm so much work, I'm so much work, I'm so much respect, I'm so much respect, I'm so much respect, I'm so much respect. What do you think I should do? Candy, I think you should always do what's good. What's good? I don't really know yet, because I'm 13. But I'm working on it. Either way, they'll get what's coming to them. But I don't think you should give them no free Sunny D. Remember, it's not a girl orange. There's been a lot of barking. When I tiptoe, I can see into the two gardens over there. One garden's got that nippy little dog with the big tail in it. The other's got that big dog with the loud barking in it. Big dog's constant barking is getting too much though. Neighbours have been complaining. But from here, I see who's got it worse. Every time big dog barks, little dog with the big tail in the garden next to it shudders. Mum sends me to the shop because she forgot to buy seasoning so. Soon as I start walking down my road, I feel like I'm being followed. I hear one of them playing Super Mario Land on the Game Boy behind me. Massive Martin's got that game. I don't look behind me. I just look forward and walk. I see that little dog with a big tail clench up itself and look at its own reflection in the garden door window, telling itself, come. On. You're just gonna have to get used to this not a barking lad and all the time. Big dogs are gonna bark loud and all the time. That's what they do. So stop getting shook, you understand? True say big dog ain't even done anything deep to you. True say it ain't you that big dog's even barking at. True say it ain't like big dogs trying to leap over the fence or nothing. Man up! That little dog gives me the strength to not turn around and I carry on walking and head into Gandhi's corner shop. Man. 
before, all Big Dog from the Nets Garden did was bark loud. Now it comes right up to the fence, sticks its face into the gap where a piece of wonky fence has slid down after one windy night, and it barks straight at Little Dog, making him shook up. What's worse is that where before, Little Dog with the big tail could escape the madness, could run away into the house, into the kitchen, and not have to hear the bark as loud from there. Nah, Little Dog's owner is gone out most of the day, locking Little Dog in the garden for it to get bark at through that gap in the fence all afternoon. So now when owner comes back, Little Dog don't even let owner open the garden door fully before it blasts itself indoors. That's the torment of the whole mess. All Little Dog ever wanted was to run around the garden with freeness. But with this new stress level, Little Dog can't even take a piss the way it used to. Like, instead of one streaming piss, Little Dog now pisses in short squirts, between barks, takes the pleasure out of it. Smoking, topping up that lucky feeling. I look across and I see that little dog with the big tail's got a new problem now. Little dog was in the garden chasing his big tail when, without warning, little dog hears a shaking at the fence. Little dog stops and turns around to find Big Dog from the next garden stood just some dog feet away. Big shoulders and leg muscles, razor sharp teeth. The growling idiot made it over. Big Dog gives chase and Little Dog flies itself tight into the space between the wall and the abandoned fridge that lays sideways. Big Dog tries to force his fat head into the space, but it can't fit. So it just barks and screams at Little Dog who bursts into tears. This lasts the whole afternoon. Then, Big Dog's owner comes home and calls Big Dog inside, so it returns to his garden and goes in. But after the day of torment, Little Dog is so shook that he don't come out from behind the fridge. It just stay there, clutching his little chest with his little dog paw till it hears his owner's keys jingle to open up the garden door. Little Dog darts indoors, skids across the laminate and throws itself behind the kitchen bin where it has one feverish cry. Then later on, Little Dog is so cross at dog life being not fair that it chews up his owner's shoe, shakes it around in a mad rage till it gets neck ache. Come the next day, Little Dog is too shook to go garden so it stays indoors where it ends up pissing and shitting around the whole house. Owner comes home to pure rankness and because Little Dog is misbehaving and unlearning basic rules that got laid down early on the grid, Owner decides that from time to time Kick Little Dog in his belly side, make it stop the foolishness. So now, nah, Little Dog can't get peace, outdoors or in. And I watch Little Dog as it comes up to his garden window. He's looking out into the garden like it does now, for hours. It's whining some sad song to itself. A song about the time when Big Dog from the next garden came over and ate him, and he died. Because Little Dog is depressed. And when you're depressed, you imagine it's worse than it is. So now, what Little Dog hates most of all is his big tail. Little Dog used to love catching it moving the side of his eye, but now when Little Dog sees it, it's just scary. His big tail ain't that different from Big Dog from the next garden's tail. So Little Dog will catch it moving his peripheral and run away from his own tail. Reach a dark hiding place behind the bin. Be calm there. Then Little Dog will see it moving the side of his eye again and Little Dog gets stressed and runs away again. And this goes on and on. And Little Dog is just getting crazier, crazier.
little dog with the big tail. That dog, that was not a little dog. It just had some growing to do. The thing grew into its tail and came to be quite a big, massive bitch full grown. So she gives birth to a litter and as if she planned it, as she was enough big now after she gave birth and as she was enough strong now from all the kicking she'd taken over the years from her owner, she jumps over into Big Dog's garden, attacks Big Dog something savage, mows it something vicious, way past revenge. And both owners agree that that dog that was once little got to get put down. But hear this. Word around the vet is that she went to the vets smiling on that fateful morning. Like she knew she was there to get the gas and was still smiling with her big tongue hanging out, wagging her tail while walking down the hallway to get killed. Like the dogs in the surrounding cages were barking saying, a dead dog walking, that's a dead dog right there. And when one shaggy dog in a cage asked our dog, Oi, why'd you do it? Our little dog just nicely barks to him. I know what I did seems wrong to some of you dogs and I know enough dogs will judge me. But what I did was right to me. It was right to me. Understand? Anyone can be a good dog. Just follow the rules and the guidelines and you'll be a good dog. But being good, feeling good, ain't the same thing. You can be enough good and feel not good. And that's what was happening to me. I did what I'd done to feel okay about myself again. Because feeling helpless is one of the worst ways a dog can feel about herself. Did it because I didn't want to feel that way no more. Did it. So my pups, their pups and pups' pups after can run free. Chase tail in the garden and take long streaming pisses without some big dog ruining it. <laughs>